Let's discuss how to make uh, beveled letters and uh, special effects like soft shadows, flames, and all that that you want to add to text. First thing to do is to type in some text. So let's type some text in here. That's a bit small, isn't it? So we'll increase the size of that. There you go. Now let's change that to a font style that's a little easier to work with. I'm going to use Impact. I think it's a nice thick font. You can use any font style. It doesn't matter. Now the first step is paint it the color that you generally want it to be. Now I'm going to choose like a, a very bright uh, magenta color like this. Okay. Again, resize it to the size that you basically am going to need for the for the job. You don't have to make it full size, but it's it's not a bad idea to to increase the size like this. This lettering is, you know, 10 inches tall. You don't want to go too big because some the way we're going to use this, some of these plugins, Adobe Photoshop plugins, uh, won't work if it's too big. So keep it reasonable. Somewhere around 10 inches is fine. First thing to do is to go to the bitmap here and convert this or rasterize it. The reason is, is this is actually vector artwork. You can't apply Adobe Photoshop plugins to vector images. They have to be applied to what's called raster images or bitmaps. So we're going to convert this into a bitmap. Select your lettering, go to bitmap, and choose rasterize. Now here's some critical things you want to keep in mind. Okay, Don't worry about these over on the side over here. Keep original, create mass transparent. Those are special things we'll talk about in another lesson. But this is resolution. You want to give it a fairly decent amount of resolution. Now, now here's the choices. You know, 18. You can see this is a 240 kilobyte thing. You, you probably don't want to do that because you, in this case, it's not too bad, but the edges can sometimes get a little jagged because you're creating a bitmap. So you probably want to rasterize this. And what I normally like to do is choose whatever amount gives me about 3 to 10 megs in in uh, size. Something like that is about right. Color mode. Stick with RGB. Most of the uh, plugins that you use for Photoshop are um, applicable to an RGB image, so keep that. And margins, I want to add enough space around the edges uh, because if I'm going to add things like a soft shadow on the outside of my letters, I want to make sure there's enough edge white space around the letters to create that. So let's increase that, okay? Let's make it maybe in this case about an inch or so. You can see it's increasing the file size down here. So I'm going to have letters that's 10 inches tall. <clears throat> excuse me, and about an inch of extra space around it. Okay, Make that any size you want. It depends on the size of your graphic. You can make it anything you want. And again, just keep in mind our projected size here. Let's click OK on that, and it's going to convert that vector artwork into a bitmap. Now you can see there's the lettering. That's a bitmap, and there's this extra white space around the edges, in my case, a couple of inches. We're going to now go to the uh, bitmap menu up here, and we're going to turn on these bitmap editing toolbars. Okay. That's these toolbars right here. These are the special tools that are like in Photoshop, Magic Wand, Selector Tools, and so forth. Take the Selector Tool, the Magic Wand Tool, and select the first letter. Hold the Shift key down, and then select each of the other letters. Now, in this case, it's very easy to do because they're all one solid letter. You could do it another way, too, by the way. If you just click on the F, go to the bitmap menu and choose make transparent and then click select similar it'll select most of those letters like that that's another way to do this um, I would suggest you just if it's easy enough just use your shift key and select each of the letters I just find that's a better way to do this now I've got the word flexi selected I don't need this anymore at the moment I'm gonna go to the bitmap menu now and this is where you have to go out and purchase some of these things we don't sell them there it's SA International Go out and find some Adobe plugins. Um, and, and what you're going to find is there's all kinds of different effects on here. A really good one is Eye Candy. Eye Candy is made by a company called Alien Skin. Uh, go out there and find it, and it can do things like chrome and bevels and all kinds of things. Let's do bevel. Just click over here on bevel, and it will open this file in that program and show you the bevel that it's going to produce. And you can use these settings over here to change the thickness and so forth you'll have to investigate that uh, a couple of nice things here be aware there's some really quick ways to do things right here okay so just keep that in mind click OK and it will apply it and there's our bevel letters now if you want to add other effects you can just go keep it keep it selected don't deselect anything go right back into the uh, filter area here and choose some other effect if you want to Things like soft shadows, you know, you want to take that and add a little shadow underneath here that's kind of soft looking, you know, something like that. Click OK. That's why we needed the extra white space, because if we don't, 
have that extra white space, it can actually cut off some of that shadow and so forth. See what we've got there? So just, just continue, if you want to, to select different parts and, and continue to add pieces to it. I mean, there's all kinds of different kinds of things you can do with this, uh, these plugins here. There's all, all different sorts of them. Some of them are free, some are not. Like this one's a free one. You know, I'm going to take this thing and, uh, you know, maybe we're going to peel back the edge just a little bit like that. You follow? So it's, it's, it's up to you. You know, it depends on what you select. So if I select everything outside my graphic here, this is now the rest of it. This part isn't selected, just the white piece right there. Uh, it would apply to the outside of my graphic. So if I try to add some special effect in here, uh, let's just say I'm going to add uh, something like a texture, and I want to do, I don't know, we'll do this stained glass thing here. I have no idea what that does. You know, okay, so it's going to put stained glass images out here behind my flexi image or something. I mean, I have no idea. It's up to me to decide whether to use it or not. Don't be surprised if sometimes these things uh, come out a little differently. I mean, you have to kind of experiment. Remember, you can undo everything and retry it again. Uh, the key is to convert the vectors into uh, bitmaps. The key is to select the parts that you want to change and then find yourself uh, some Adobe plugins. To make these active in Flexi, what you want to do is when you install the plugins, install them wherever you wish, go to the Edit menu, choose Preferences, go to the File Paths tab, and then right here you're going to simply browse to the location where the plugins are located. In my case, it's under the CS3 uh, Photoshop directory. Pretty normal place. Click OK and it loads them all up. You can see them loading right down here on the bottom. Once that finishes loading, my plugins are now active and they will show up in this menu here. So please uh, use these plugins. You're going to find some very nice effects. You can really create some uh, cool looking uh, images for printing. Uh, remember that this is a bitmap now, so you have all the little uh, things you have to worry about with bitmaps, you know, the jagged edges and you know all that sort of thing you know you might want to sometimes come in here and apply the filters that come with flexi like blurs and so forth you know to blur things out if you want to kind of soften things up a little bit you could do that I want to get rid of that little line that's being placed in there for whatever reason not a problem I might just blur this a little bit it won't really change my graphic all that significantly I mean it depends in this case I overdid it but the idea is I might have had that lettering selected and just the lettering would have been blurred. So feel free to experiment here uh, with your filters. That's the way you can take your basic lettering and make some really neat effects from it using Adobe plugins. This is Mark Rugen for GiveMeHelp.com and SA International. Thanks for watching.